going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Tactical Talks. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys my latest purchase. So, first off, I want to say big shout out to Javier H, one of my subscribers. Um, I posted this picture right here and I asked, or I, I said, you know, I bought a new gun. What do you guys think it is? You can see how big the box is now. Um, it's definitely not a small gun. And Javier H got it right. It was a Ruger HR. Um, this is somewhat of an unboxing, with the exception of I've already looked at it, I've already inspected the gun when I bought it, um, taking it out of the bag, different things like that. But I'm going to give you, be giving you guys my initial impression on this gun, and kind of why I bought this gun, and just show you guys this gun. This thing right now, they are starting to roll out. You can find these now. They're just hard to find. And right now, because they are so hard to find, and there's a limited amount out, um, the price on them is is kind of ridiculous now I will tell you that I did not pay the um, retail price I didn't overpay for this thing I actually paid a lot less under and I'll tell you guys how I did that towards the end of the video and I'll tell you guys where there's one of these available for a decent price same place where I got mine from unfortunately like I said my deal was just a lot better but I'll tell you guys where that is available so that you guys can go and check it out. Now there is only one available, so if you guys want one of these, you gotta jump on this as soon as possible, hit them up and try to get that gun. But with that being said, you open up this box. It's a hard case, very nice hard case with foam on top. It's got all your Ruger paperwork like normal. It's got a gun lock in there like normal. And this is the presentation. Very nice, very sleek presentation, very simple. Um, I'm a huge fan of simple. As long as it works, as long as it looks good, I'm good with it. I don't like over the top, ridiculous, too much foam everywhere. This foam starts to flake and tear off and just, I'm not a huge fan. It comes with an extra magazine. Now these are metal 20 round magazines. For those of you that don't know, the Ruger 5.7 is chambered in 5.7 by 28 millimeter. It is an amazing, amazing pistol. Now, this magazine also has no rounds in it so we're gonna set that down to the side I do want to say this is like I said the inboxing other than me inspecting it I have not shot this thing nor have I shot any Ruger HR um, I'm saying HR over here nor have I shot any Ruger 57 um, and not to mention I've never shot any 57 firearm now the reason I say that is because I have held and I have manipulated the FN 5.7 years ago and I did want that gun and I say did because obviously I wanted this one more and I'll get into all of that but we're gonna point out some things what I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison with the FN um, reason number one I don't have the FN to put side-by-side -side with this and show you guys all the differences I mean, there's videos all over YouTube. You guys can search them if that's something that you're looking into and you're wanting to compare and decide which one is a better firearm for you. So I'm not going to be comparing them side by side. And two, I'm not going to get into all the specific specs on this thing. I am going to be talking about and pointing out different things on this gun um, that it comes with, reasons why I like the things that it comes with. But I'm not going to get in and tell you what kind of polymer this is or what grade steel this is and what kind of barrel I'm not gonna get in all that if you guys are really concerned or you're really interested in the, spe the specifics like that you guys can go to Ruger.com or you can go to any other Ruger site where they've reviewed this gun talked about this gun and they get into all the meat and potatoes as far as what exactly this gun is made of and how it performs now I will tell you that a lot of the sites that I've seen it says that the feet per second as far as velocity on this thing is anywhere from 1500 to 2000 I guess that's fairly accurate everything that I've seen online is averaging somewhere between 17 and 1800 feet per second um, for this round it's a 40 grain bullet and this thing I've seen accuracy shots up to about a hundred yards um, and that's saying a lot for a pistol now you do have that it's right under five inch barrel so you have these the long range sights right here um, the longer the distance here, obviously, the little bit better you are going to be as far as accuracy is concerned. But all those things come into play as well as your ability to shoot. So you can have a gun that's 
not as big, not as nice, a caliber that is, is flat shooting, and still be able to get decent performance out of it if you know what you're doing. But I'm not going to get into all that right now. We're going to go back to the gun. Things that I like about this gun. Again, not comparing side by side with the, the FN, but I do like that this is a little bit skinnier as far as the grip is concerned. I put up another video the other day where I was talking about my SIG and my hands not being very big and me not being able to reach that gun light and stuff. So I do have medium to large size hands, but one thing I like is that with my hands, I can get a nice purchase on the gun, a nice firm grip without any issues. Now this slide looks huge to some of you and some of you probably aren't going to like this gun, but for me, I mean, even though I'm not into the huge slide and the big 1911 look, I love this gun. Um, and it's mainly for the caliber, but again, compared to other guns chambered in this caliber, this one comes on top for me. Right out the box, you do have the slide window, you do have front serrations as well as the rear serrations. Um, you have nice adjustable sights on here, as well as a fiber optic sight up here in the front, which I am a huge fan of. Um, like I stated, the rear one is adjustable, and you also have these two little mounting points right here. And what these mounting points do is allow you to buy the optic adapter plate that goes around $40. You take these two little screws out, put the little adapter plate in there, put these screws back in, and then you can mount anything from... Um, a Trigicon RMR to a Vortex Viper, Vortex Venom, the Burris. There's a bunch of different options that you can go and buy. And for only $40, if you already have the optic, that's a really nice little setup. I already have a Vortex Viper, so I'm considering dropping the $40 that it's going to take to put a red dot on top of this, considering how far this thing can reach out. Like everything else, it has a rail. Um, nothing too crazy as far as that's concerned. You can attach your lights, lasers, all that kind of thing. It does have a little bit bigger trigger opening, trigger uh, housing opening. For those of you guys that do have those big old sausage fingers or big old hands, whatever, you got gloves on, it's a lot easier to get inside of there um, and manipulate that trigger. This does have the trigger safety right in the middle, like most of you Glock guys are used to. So that's very easy to get to. The, the take up on the trigger, as far as just dry firing, is not horrible. It does have some play in it, but again, nothing too crazy. Um, what I do like about this gun is, as far as the safety is concerned, the other gun, the FN, has a safety up here, which I'm not a huge, huge fan of. Like I said, never actually shot it, never carried it, just manipulated it years ago, and I'm just not a huge fan as, of the safety being up here. I'm not a big 1911 guy, even though this is a 1911 style safety on here, but what I am is I'm a huge AR guy, and... For those of you guys that know that shoot your ARs, your safety is right here on the thumb. So it was a little bit easier for me to get used to as far as manipulating that with my thumb. And with a little bit of practice, I mean, it kind of just comes natural. As soon as I grab the gun, my thumb comes down and I know I'm ready to go. Um, other things, let's see. This grip is not too aggressive, but it's aggressive enough to where you get a nice feel for the gun. It's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to slide anywhere. Now, for those of you who watch my channel, you guys know that I use the Talon grips on all of my guns, the rubberized ones, so that is going to be happening with this. Talon grips, if you guys want to sponsor the channel, hit me up, because I have Talon grips pretty much on every gun that I own. Um, as far as the look of the gun, I think this looks a little more aggressive. It looks a little bit nicer. It has a steel slide, where the FN does have a steel slide, but it's covered in plastic or polymer, and to me... I just didn't like the whole plastic look. Um, as far as the proportions on the gun, it looked a little bit goofy to me, but just for my preferences, my liking, and not to mention that this thing is about half the price of its competitor. What else? Let's see. Uh, oh, the other thing that I do like about this that not a lot of people have talked about is this gun will fire without a magazine inserted. I know some of you that's not a huge deal, some of you wouldn't even notice some of you wouldn't even care but if I'm doing reloading drills or whatever the case is and I have a round in the chamber and I decide I want to drop a magazine and while I'm reaching for the second magazine to do a reload if I decide that there's a threat and I want to engage I still have that option and I don't have to worry about having that magazine in the FN does not have that option you have to have the magazine inserted to fire off the round 
Um, this also has a round indicator. Now, I will tell you guys the first gun, the first firearm that I purchased on my own um, years later was a Ruger. I, I had a Ruger, I think it was the SR40, and it had the little round indicator. It had a external safety, and I liked that gun. It was a very nice gun. It shot well and never had any issues with it. I sold it just because it wasn't for me. Once I got introduced to Glocks and other guns, I was just sold on the Glock, so I'm a huge Glock fan. But going back to some of these things, like the external safety and the round indicator, I mean, it was kind of a, a, a nice little take back or whatever. It took me back to that first pistol, you know. And like I said, with this, very simple, very easy. The uh, external safety that was on my SR40, I feel like was a little bit smaller, a little bit harder to manipulate. But this one is ambidextrous, and it's very, very easy to find, to hit. And I've had no issues with it. Other than that, I mean, to me, this is just a beautiful, beautiful gun. I've waited for a very long time. I was actually going to buy the FN 5.7 um, at the beginning of this year. I put some money aside and decided, you know what, that's the gun that I wanted. Mainly because I wanted the, the, the caliber. Now, luckily a friend of mine said, well, why don't you wait for Ruger's? And I didn't know what he was talking about because I hadn't heard that Ruger was coming out with their own 5.7. So I ended up waiting to SHOT Show. This was introduced at SHOT Show. Um, and I think it was actually leaked a little bit before, but the big introduction was at SHOT Show. I ended up learning about it and just told myself, that's a gun that I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy that gun, this is gonna be awesome. Well, because of back orders and coronavirus and all these other things, for whatever reason, this gun has just been very scarce. And not a lot of people have these right now. Now, there are a few videos online a lot of them were loaner guns that were handed out um, to people to review and to some of these bigger channels um, that got paid for them and then had to return the gun and different things like that. But there's not a lot of people that are actually that have actually gone out, found this gun, and owned this gun who are putting out a lot of content. Now, I know there are some. Again, there's just not a lot. So when I saw this one, immediately I liked the look of this one better than the other one. Um, because I, the first time I manipulated this gun was today when I bought it. But I immediately liked the look of this one as compared to the other one. Um, when I first held this gun, it was just amazing to me how light it was. For a gun this big, for it to be this light and to still have that full steel slide, it was just crazy to me. I really expected this thing to be a lot heavier. Fully loaded, I want to say, with a 20 round mag and the gun, you're looking at about a pound and a half which really is not that bad considering how big this thing is, um, how strong the ammunition is, and how much ammunition you actually have with it. So a pound and a half is nothing as far as I'm concerned. So like I said, I was going to buy the FN 5.7. The only thing is I just didn't want to spend that much money on that pistol. And I didn't know that if it was going to be a pistol that I carried all the time. Was it just going to be something that sat in the safe? Was not sure. Ended up not buying it when I heard about this one. And I'm very, very glad I didn't. Again, nothing against you FN guys or you know people that like that gun better than this one or people that have not seen this one yet. But to me, it just looked plasticky. It looked like a toy. Even though this one does have the polymer frame on the bottom, I mean, the slide still has that steel look and it just looks a lot nicer to me. Um, like I said, the other one, real fat on the bottom, very bulky. It, the proportions just didn't look right as far as I was concerned. This one looks correct as far as to me, as proportions, all the way through. Um, and then the big selling point was just that, the price as far as the sale was concerned. This is almost half the price as if you were, you know, if you were to buy an FN. Now, like I stated before in the beginning of the video, because these are so hard to find, there are prices that are kind of high and there are prices that are extremely high to try to find one of these. So. I mean, it's up to you guys if you guys want to pay that much money to have one right now or if you guys want to wait a little bit once they're out and kind of everybody has them. And then at that point, you decide that you want to spend less money and definitely a lot less than an FN to go out and get one of these. Now, the only thing that I'm waiting on right now is ammo. Ammo is another thing that, as all my gun guys know, it is very scarce right now, hard to find. But I am ordering some ammo, so there's ammo is going to come in, so we're going to go out and do some shooting. We'll do like a first mag impression. And then I got, of course, my buddy Levi at Concho Valley Custom Kydex, who's going to make a holster for me. 
and uh, we'll just kind of go from there. For those of you who want to know how much I paid for this and how I got this thing so cheap, I had a 1911 that I bought years ago just because I didn't have a 1911. I'm not a 1911 guy by any means, um, and I proved that to myself because after I bought the 1911 that I had, it sat in my safe and I never carried it, never used it. I had multiple holsters for it from leather holsters to kydex holsters to um, the kydex holster that it came with as well as the recover tactical grips on it with the recover tactical holster so I had all these options but for me I mean to have that big of a gun as far as the weight was concerned and only be able to carry eight nine rounds it just didn't make a lot of sense to me in the colder months when I decided I wanted to carry a bigger gun I usually just carried my Glock 17 and just kept 9mm across the board and I had a lot more ammo as opposed to having that 45 so it said in my safe for years I hit up my buddy and just said hey I know you have this gun can we work a deal out I'll sell you my 1911 and then I'll put that money towards this one and then just pay the difference so because he knows me because I'm really good friends with his son um, he gave me a really good deal on this one right off the bat and then bought the other gun for me put that money towards this so all I had to pay was the difference. And I'm not going to get into specifics on exactly how much I paid. But I will tell you, whatever you find them online for, it doesn't matter what it is. The cheapest one you find online, I guarantee you I paid less than half of that price. So we'll leave it at that. With that being said, for those of you guys who are looking for one of these, I got this at GunsAmerica.com. Now... There's a bunch, bunch of people that sell guns on GunsAmerica.com. If you're looking for the seller that I bought it from, to let you know that one is available, one is brand new, in the box, same condition as this, you have to type in CBH, that's Charles Boy Henry, CBH Arms, in the search box. Search it. Once you have searched it and it brings up the listing, I would categorize or select sort by newest and scroll down, you'll find the Ruger 57 or 57 it'll be for sale if it's still available price everything hit him up and let him know that you want this gun let him know that you saw this gun on my channel and I guarantee you you will not be disappointed so with that being said let me know what you guys think of this gun again shout out to Javier H you got it right I did get myself a Ruger 57 thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.